Okay, here are round one against Drag Rage. Um, I believe that's what how you pronounce that. And we have kind of a sketchy keep. I like it because I have all my mana, so that's pretty nice. But it's just a three and then a five. We are going to be on the draw. I'm not going to mulligan this, though. Um, even though my opponent mulled down. Hopefully we just don't flood out too hard. Ooh, I'm playing against an aggro deck. That can get scary. Of course we are going to flood out. But hey, we do want lands. We have a lot to do with our mana, so that's fine. Our opponent's playing a little bit of green as well. That's fascinating. We uh, kind of got lucky and ripped our uh, two drop. I guess we'll just go ahead and play out the mountain, make my opponent think I'm playing more red than I am. If I had something nutty to do with my uh, hedonist, I think I would be more than happy to uh, go ahead and sacrifice now and try to put out a four drop, but I don't have any of that to do. Or a five drop. The Battlemaster is a three three and there's nothing to make it great. Um, here I'm just going to go ahead and attack and see if my opponent wants to uh, make the trade, because I'm actually fine with that. Getting my opponent not to ramp or be able to fix mana is okay, and this 2-1 is really not doing a whole lot. And as expected, my opponent just went ahead and took the damage. I had a bunch of mana up to represent different types of tricks. So, Voyaging Seder. Okay, so my opponent wants to be ramping and fixing and doing lots of that type of stuff. But kind of stalling out, which is okay. Here I can go ahead and start bashing in for three if I want to use my entire turn, which I don't. I'll just go ahead and attack him with the Hedonist. Again, I'm willing to trade with either of these dudes um, from the Hedonist. And then I don't think I care about my extra point of life um, from the Nylea's Disciple. Just gonna keep keep representing my combat trick. Opponent probably should have gone ahead and blocked unless my opponent really needs these two. Being stuck on three could be the case. But mainly because I didn't attack with my Agent of Horizons, it means I'm really not holding a combat trick in hand. But there we have it. So this should help us have a nice cushion being an eight point difference here as we play our Centaur Battlemaster next turn and able to start attacking in. 5-drop gets to come down here. If it's something like a Nessian Asp... Yep. Um, I don't think I want to play my Battlemaster. I think we'll just wait and save up for the Volpine Goliath. We don't have any ways to abuse the Battlemaster yet, so it's just kind of like a blah. Instead, we'll just go ahead and attack in with the Agent of Horizons. And kind of get this race on. Yeah, I like that. Oops. I'll be able to get the Volpine Goliath down next turn. I still have another turn before my opponent can monstrosity the Nessian Asp. Not gonna block. Staunch Hard Warrior. Okay. Another Disciple. By attacking with my dudes, there could be a Savage Surge or something that eats these guys. I think I just want to get my Vulpine Goliath out, though. And at this point, we're in a race, right? Yeah, it's a race. I got a lot of life gain. I'm not going to take him with my agent, because I don't want it to trade off, because I like that as evasion. But if my opponent wants to throw a couple dudes in front and start trading down, that should actually benefit me? Or will it? Maybe not. Maybe I just do the three a turn thing. Because I don't want to take that much from the Nessian Asp. No, let's attack in. Alright, 
right, so some form of a trick of something's coming through. Savage Surge, okay. So we knew that was a possibility. Still okay with that. I'm glad it took the Nessian Asp, the Savage Surge, instead of the Stunt Hard Warrior. Which my opponent was doing in case I had such combat tricks. There could be a combat trick that uh, would make this Asp attack okay. What combat trick would make that okay with the Star Charter Warrior as well? I guess anything, really, because I would make it into five. And we're just doing the race thing, and my opponent doesn't realize that there's so much life gain coming across the board right now. So I'll take six, and we can bash in for a bunch, because next turn we get to uh, play the Disciple and attack back for nine. Feral invocation, yep. So we take a bit of damage, but that's fine. There's a follow up here. Ooh, getting three life is a bummer. But I still think we're okay on the life. Ooh, that's really good too. Alright, if I play any of this Disciple, we gain 6 life, I attack in, well if I'm at 16, the next turn, 6, 79, 10, 11, take 11 damage, because I'm assuming I have my Disciple to at worst chump block. I kind of like that. I don't think there's any my opponent can have to get through in these colors. Could be on a splash. But yeah, they were in really good shape. It's a little dangerous being tapped out, though. Opponent's down to five. With the center of Battlemaster and Titan Strength up, we're in pretty good shape, especially with our Trample dude. Probably the worst thing would be a land for my opponent to have here. My opponent definitely has to be thinking, hey, am I going to attack in? How am I going to block? Alright, so opponent's going for a bit of damage here. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is 11 points of damage. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And we have the win next turn with a Agent of Horizons and Titan Strength. So we're just going to go ahead and prevent the most amount of damage and make sure we don't lose this turn. I'm cool with that. Hoping to see if my opponent would play something. Because so what I really want to see are no cards in my opponent's hand. So that's a lot of life as well. Is there a way for me to win? I only get to do six points, three, four, five. That's only one on this dude. To get to seven? If I play Nightly as presence, I'm not quite there. I can easily attack with the Volpine Goliath. Which will do some amount of damage. Since I can't win this turn, I need to protect the Agent of Horizon, then just kind of bring out the Centaur Battlemaster for defense. I'm just going to attack him with the Goliath. That's really all I can do. I could try to play my Nylea's Presence and rip a land to play it and something else, but I don't really see the point of that. Right, now this disciple just takes it and we get three points of damage through, which is great.
play our Centaur Battlemaster and keep up our Titan Strength, which my opponent doesn't play a land this turn. We should be in okay shape to... Boom. So the Asp cannot get Monstrous, which is great. It means my opponent wants to try to attack with it, we're in, we can just eat her up. My opponent has one, two, three, four, five mana available. We're going to block the Asp and take six, possibly something else. And then having the um, scry is going to be really grand. And time to feed is really grand as well. Is there a double combat trick here? Nope. Just barely staying alive there. Okay, do we have this? With the time to feed, we take out... My opponent has no cards in hand. Yeah, that should do it. Because uh, it doesn't really matter. We'll do that. Gain three life. And then go for the win. Yay! Cool. So that's a really fun, swingy game. Back and forth, big old, big old beats. Um, let's see what, though, if I have anything in my sideboard that will make this better. We kind of went off of that Titan Strength. I mean, the number of cards, but I feel like this was the card my opponent really wasn't going to be playing around. I kind of like the idea of having Aquarius form to get the big beats through, but I don't know if I want to give up my two Titan Strengths, which seem to be really good in this matchup. It's just my opponent knows to play around it now. Now nah, I'm going to keep it this way. Let's just keep the main build. I do wish... Uh, I'm kind of worried about my opponent having that sideboard card. I don't even know what it's called, but the green creature fights green creature. And you get plus two and plus two and all those fun things. Because, yeah, that's scary. We got a sweet keep here with a courser into a four drop and a time defeat. So, no, we're not going to mulligan. And we even draw our next point of land, which is good. We have all of our mana. Hmm. Phalanx Leader. That's a very good card. That's going to get fed eventually, I'm sure. I am positive of it. Because I definitely don't want that to grow out of proportion. With the two Feral Invocations we've seen and a Savage Surge, there's lots of ways for my opponent to target Phalanx Leader. So first chance we get, I want to try to kill that dude. Hopefully in a turn or two. I don't think that's how I'd play my Leaf Crown Dryad. It's already off curve. I'd rather wait one more turn and bestow it, but whatever. Not my dealio. I guess we can just kind of gloat about our sweet mana base here. Pass the turn. Can't do any blocks. We've seen way too many tricks from my opponent. See, so yeah, I clearly there's some tricks in hand. We'll take three, possibly a whole lot more. No, just three. That's good. That's great. For one green, there's really nothing that can uh, my opponent can survive with this phalanx leader. So I think I just take the opportunity now to time defeat. Because otherwise, the Phalanx here can get out of hand, and then my what I have in hand won't be able to uh, to do anything. So there we go. Gain some of our life back. Keep up our Titan Strength. Not F16. 
in order to suggest that we have it and see if my opponent wants to call our bluff. Next turn we have an Asp, and then we start getting some more life, and we're just going to do the swingy, swingy game plan here. We know my opponent still has the combat trick. I think it's time to start getting that combat trick out of hand. Is that right? But if it's a Feral Invocation, becomes 5-4, five, 4-4. Four, four, four. Do I have ways to deal with that? Not really. Let's just wait till we have a another 3-3 three, three down, and we can start doing some double blocks. It's not hard warrior. OK. I'm considering, yeah, we'll just go ahead and maximize the mana, get the Asp down. Still don't want to be attacking. I want to keep the defense up. Next attack should kind of educate what's in hand, a Savage Surge or a Feral Invocation, if the Leaf Crown Drag comes in or not, and it doesn't. So yeah, there's a plus two, plus two something happening. And because of that, I'm fine with the Nessian Asp. Um, doing a two for one. Um, so I can put the Asp in front of the Laguna Band Elder. I can't put anything in front of the Staunch Hearted Warrior yet because uh, that turns it into, like, if it's a Feral Invocation, a 6 6. And I'm really not in a position for that to happen in the moment. Otherwise, I could just take another 5. Yeah, actually, we're going to do that. We're high enough life, and with our two Nylea's Disciple, we can actually take more life than what our opponent thinks. Because um, next turn we're going to get a uh, Nylea's Disciple down, then probably another Nylea's Disciple, and we'll have um, our, our two 3-3s three to do a lot. Yeah, so it's Feral Invocation. So we do take a bit, quite a bit of damage. And a Sedge Scorpion. Okay. So we got to get to this late game. That's what has to happen. Let's see if my opponent wants to continue to attack in. We've already seen that my opponent doesn't want to bluff combat tricks, so if there isn't a combat trick, it's not coming through. So there is a 10 10 on the other side of the table. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Interesting. I think we just triple block. I still look at it until all it, it puts us in a good position. My opponent's tapped out. I have a 3-3, three, three, but I have other guys coming down. Yeah, I'm actually okay with that. It's by no means great for me, being this far behind. And we're just going to keep drawing lands, but we're getting there. We are getting there. Do I care about another 3-3 three, three right now? I think we'll just go ahead and play the Occult out. Try to keep our mana base alive. Another Feral Invocation would be bad if that's what my opponent drew. Looks like that's the case. Three, four, five, six. So I think we're just going to go ahead and double block a Leaf Crown Dread. Um, so if there is like a Feral Invocation or something, we still get to kill it. Uh, versus the Laguna Ban Elder. Wait, three, four, five. Actually, we can do it with both, right? No, because, yeah, never mind. That's a bad idea. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight would put us down to one if my opponent wants to do a plus two, plus two something on, like I said, just on any card that's getting through. Don't know if I can really stay alive this long. Oh, Dallas Onslaught. That does it. We didn't see that last game. Didn't know to play around it. Ouch. Hmm. 
right. What else do I want to care about right now? Still don't care about shredding wins. My opponent has a much more explosive start in many ways. But we're going to be on the better side of this now. Still don't think I want to sideboard anything. Yeah. I'm just going to play first, which will be nice. With a very weak hand. We have to mulligan this. Is five better than this hand? If we draw lands, we get there with the Disciple. Yeah, we have to mulligan. This is actually okay. At least I can play my four drop. It's going to be a rough one. Sedge Scorpion is actually okay. Ooh, Boon Seder. That's good too. She'll just flash that guy in on end of my opponent's next turn. Of course, we have one of the hardest starts to deal with here. Ooh, Nylea is good. But a little slow to the party. I'm just trying to decide if I want to uh, trade off my Boon Seder for both these guys. I don't know if I can come back from 10 life. Is it 2 for 1, I suppose? But if my opponent has like a Feral Invocation, I mean, it's just a 1 for 1, right? It's just this guy's gonna get out of hand. How do I deal with it in the late game? I gotta go for it. I don't think I win if I don't. Actually, no. I think I need to win with Knight Leah, to be honest. Oh, sad day. Let's see what happens. Definitely want to gain my life. I'm going to attack him with my Seder. And then we'll play Nylea next turn, and Nylea will be an Indestructible God, and then maybe we can get there on this race. Alright, big ol' race time. Don't know how it's gonna work with this 10 life point happening. But Nylea holds back the fort. So the main thing I need to do is protect my devotion and keep uh, Nylea as indestructible and as a creature. And he's just, that's okay. Actually okay to see that quite a bit. We don't have attacks. That's fine. Ooh, Agent of Horizon's good. Do I want to attack in though with my Nylea God of the Hunt? I don't think I can, because I need to keep the defense game on board, right? But that allows my opponent to really get ahead on, on life, or on the board. Yeah, we need defense and I need evasion, which is what's happening as we speak. Playing out another creature is good in terms of keeping the devotion cost super up. Alright, my opponent's gonna gain tons of life. It means I'm now kinda worried about the clock, so if I'm gonna win this game, it means I'm grinding it out. That's gonna be very good. 
Still don't want to attack though. But the Chimera is going to help us get there next. But it might be a little bit confused, or it might just be seeing the Rising Chimera coming down. Wow, look at all this life gain. Dang. Alright, I'm just going to attack in with the Chimera, play out the Fairy's Band Centaur, and go late. Oh wait, the <laughs> Say Scorpion has reach. Great. Alright, Agent of Horizons is going to be the dude here. Along with Nylea. Because once I'm in a comfortable position with enough of these blockers and attackers, I can do quite a bit attacking with Nylea each turn. I mean, kind of let the god do its, do its thing. Okay. Vigilance is bad. It means there's a whole lot of pressure coming across the table here. But there's still... A trickle of life and a really good spell to back it up. Alright, I'm going to start attacking with Nylea now that I have a really nice um, added pressure to the table. If my opponent wants to attack in with anything other than the Sedge Scorpion, I'm fine with that. Um, the Sedge Scorpion coming in means I might have to do a double block here. Do I want to do a double block here? Because um, I can block with the Fairy's Band Centaurs. Three. That means I have to conceivably get... Um, yeah, I'm just going to take the six. I'm actually okay with that right now. Do you have to be careful? You know, some mortals is quite great. Um, I'm just trying to decide how I want to maximize my mana. Do I want to play another Corsair, which isn't doing much, or do I want to attack in with Agent of Horizons? I think that'll be better. Keep Nylea back for some more defense. I didn't really think that through. I shouldn't have been attacking. I want to see what my opponent would do anyway. But I get attack in for six here now, and that's pretty good. Could be a Savage Surge to get my Chimera. That's not the end of the world. Cool. Voyage's End is obviously quite amazing. Be able to um, do the agent and play Voyage's End as needed. Still want to do this. See if my opponent takes the bait again and wants to attack with the Sedge Scorpion. Alright, yep, do a chump. Cool with that.
See if the opponent's going to try attacking in. Yep, will. And we're just going to go ahead and uh, let that happen. Could try to double block and bait out a trick or something. But I'm not going to be too greedy. Ooh, God's willing. Oh, maybe I should have blocked. But that's okay. We're not dead. Bum, I don't get a scry, though. That would have been nice. Gain one life. Um, this Feral Vacation is kind of cool. If we had one more mana, it'd be way better. I think we just do another six point swing, right? Attack within the Chimera and the Agent. Keep our defense available since we're so low on life. Yeah, pretty sure that's what we do. I'm just going to do the Chimera, actually, and get another Nessian Courser out, just to continue to have good defense, because that's how I lose this game. And that's that. Opponent was getting tired of the game, apparently. We'll see you in round two, everybody.